and welcome to the latest episode of Off The Fence, brought to you in association with Ball Sports on all your At The Races digital platforms. And we are well into the Cheltenham Festival week. We are recording this on Wednesday evening, just after Willie Mullins has notched up his 100th winner here at the Cheltenham Festival. But of course, by the time you may be well be listening and watching this, he may be well on 103, 104, who knows at this stage, it's all going terribly well at the moment for Team Mullins. It's going okay for Team Off the Fence, I think it's fair to say. And on this episode, we are going to be looking at day four of the festival. So getting stuck into the Gold Cup very shortly, starting off with the triumph. But let's check in with Barry Garrity and Tony Keenan. Tony, I'll come to you first. How would you rate your personal week on a scale of one to ten currently? Oh God, one to ten. Six maybe. I, I'm in, I'm in, I'm slightly in front. Yeah, going all right. Um, I think I think spectacle wise it ha- it hasn't been wonderful. Um, I think the Grade One races really have lacked drama up until the Champion Chase today, which you know e- even was a drama. I I don't know. Um, Captain Guinness has won, but but he's won by default really. So I I do I think though a lot of those races though were set up to to probably lack something out there happening the ones maybe from here on in look much more open the Ryanair um, and the uh, steer total especially the ones we're going to talk about here the triumph is obviously very interesting what's going on in the Henderson yard and Gallop in the Shams while he is a short price favourite he, he does have meaningful opposition in the Gold Cup yeah absolutely you're, you're bang on there is proper opposition there and as you say the Henderson form an issue Barry um Nicky's been so open about his the situation with the horses. They obviously aren't sure which bullets are going to fire and which aren't. Uh, what more do you have on that specific issue for us at this stage? I spoke to Nicky twice today, and uh, yeah, sure. Look at it; it's a struggle for him. He's run nine horses to date at the festival. Six have pulled up. Two have been placed, including Lucia and the champion. Uh, and Daddy the Great was twelve to twenty one in the Carl, having travelled really well. Maybe he didn't get the trip, and um, you can't say. But it's just such a, it's such an unknown. You can't. You don't know what's going to happen, and for that reason, it'd be very hard to um, get stuck into Sergino. Yeah, well, should we, should we kick on then with the Triumph Hurdle? Looking obviously at day four, kicking off at the one thirty, the Triumph Hurdle, and as Barry's just mentioned there, Sergino has been at the top of this market since he won. Uh, it was here in January at, at at Cheltenham and put in such a devastating effort that day. He shot himself to the top of the Triumph Hurdle market and he has stayed there. But of course now we have this Nicky Henderson stable form issue. Is he going to run? If he runs, will he fire? Who knows? So taking him on is Madgeborough for the Willie Mullins yard uh, and Cargis from the same stables as well as Stormheart as well. And Salvador Mundi in there for Willie at two. And then after, if you took out the Mullins horses, you get down to Nürburgring at 10 to 1 for Joseph as the horse behind Sergino in the market. So Willie really still does have a handle on this. But Barry, like, how how can we get involved in this race when we don't know what Sergino is going to be feeling like, essentially? Personally, I think you just have to ignore him and look elsewhere. Um, and the horse you named out, Cargis, Stormheart, Madgeborough, and then Bunting. There's only two and a half lengths covering those four on that Leopardstown run. Now, Bunting is a way bigger price. So for me, if you're looking for value in something that has a squeak, in what's an open race, um, bunting could be value, but there is a good bit of chat about Salvatore Mundi, um, second to Sergino on his only start over hurdles in a tie last April. Um, he runs with a first time tongue tie. Um, as I say, there's a bit of chat about him. Um, he could be the alternative because for me, there's so little between those and such a question mark over Sergino, it's hard to pinpoint the one. Tony, do you, at this stage, are you able to have any sort of a confident view, given everything Barry's just expanded on there? Uh, a couple of interesting things here. Paul Townend has picked Stormheart. I'm a little bit surprised at that. Um, he did pick him at Leopardstown. I thought the way he rode him at Leopardstown suggested that the horse wanted to look at his hurdles and maybe is a little bit of an iffy jumper. He does seem to lack a bit of scope. And this has turned out to be quite a big field, actually. I think a little bit bigger than anticipated. You've got 14 runners. Um, so his jumper might be under pressure again. Majbra is the one with with the real um, potential to improve, having only his first start for Mullins and I think a second start overall um, at the DRF. But I, I'm happy to go with the proven form of Kyrgyz here again. Um, I think the ground being, at least on the soft side, is going to suit. There is some more rain forecast. I thought at Leperstown, Stormheart kind of got first runner up. 
um, and the way she travelled to the lead very smoothly was, was impressive. And I'm not sure she doesn't awful lot in front. Danny Mullins is, is back on her. I think that's probably no harm because he's ridden her in her two Irish starts and she can be quite a keen goer. And the other one I throw into the mix is Nürburgring, Green, who I think really should be suited by the new course. The stiff track is what he wants. He's been off since Christmas, but that is by design because he, he was uh, quite busy before that. He had three or four hurdles run, started off at the Stowell, places like that. Um, and Joseph O'Brien obviously has got a good handle on that juvenile form. So I'd be quite happy back in uh, both of those. Um, each way there's four places available in some spots and uh, I'd be happy enough going to war with them. Um, but yeah, the Sir, Sir Gino is hard to kind of hard to face in Dan and again there is there would also be a concern is he actually gonna turn up? Yeah, absolutely. TBC on that front. T um, Tony, I will stick with you for the county hurdle. Uh, at the top of the betting currently is King of Kingsfield for Gordon Elliott. Hopefully he had some strong uh, runners towards the end of the week. So fingers crossed he's on the board by this point. Lou the stud in there, though, for the Dan Skelton, Harry Skelton team. Obviously, we've seen what they've done on day two with their handicap as two winners in the bag. Absurd in there for Mullins. Um those are, those are your top three, essentially. Is this another skeleton handicap opportunity, do you think? Uh, I would say he's got a, got a leading chance, um, similar to Langer Dan. He's a this apparent um, ulcer treatment, and, he, and he's bounced out of that very well to, to run a, an excellent race in the Betfair hurdle. I know Iberico Lord hasn't done the form any good in the champion hurdle, but I think that that's obviously a questionable representation of the form. Um, Favoir and what was it, Go Dante fought at the race at Sandown on Saturday, so that the form does look very solid. He, he looks a leading chance, but that's well reflected in the market at this stage. Um, of the Irish horses, I'd be keen to be with Absurd over King of Kingsfield. Um, two good pointers to him. Obviously, that form has worked out really well. The the race from the DRF, you, you've had Slade Steel and Ballyborn come out of that race to, to boost it to win grade ones. And Absurd, while he finished behind King of Kingsfield, he's a little bit better off with the weights. But more than that, I actually thought he, he kind of went better through the race than King of Kingsfield. He, he kind of passed him out and went by him in the straight and just kind of faded a little bit there. I think he'd be a bit straighter for this. This was probably more his target than that race. Um, was coming back from the Melbourne Cup and you know, whereas King of Kingsfield has kind of been on the go all through the winter. I think there's more scope with Absorb uh, for progression. And the other big thing with Absorb, as mentioned last night, Paul Townsend's taken a handicap ride here, so they must fancy him. Um, so that to me, that to me, that's a massive pointer. Like he hasn't taken one all week. Gallop and the Champs is coming up after this. Um, he's not minding himself for this. So I'd say they think this is well handicapped. And the other Irish one, uh, I'm going to have a few quid on is Magical Zoe. Um, very consistent mare, excellent record of two miles, never run a bad race of two miles. She's the track form last season from the dawn run. That that worked out well in behind with the likes of Lucia and she could be anything all kind of been very competitive off, off high marks in the handicaps. Um, she ran second at the Dublin Racing Festival, but I think they found out something about her that day at Leperstown that they didn't need to give her extreme hold-up riding. Right. Adrian hasn't given far too much to do in the dawn run last year, but last time at Leperstown, they just sat her in mid-div and she was perfectly comfortable, per Settled perfectly well doing that, so I think there's more options with her this time round. Um, and finish up actually at Leperstown, they went a really strong pace, and I thought she just struck on a little bit sooner than ideal. That run was a first run since then, Royal back in November, what it got to two and a half, three months. Should be a bit of improvement for that. We know kind of a big field suits, um, you know, the track kind of suits ground drain out a bit would also be a help. So yeah, I'd be happy enough. Magical Zoe and Absorb will be made two against the field. In a race where the front end looks quite solid, like the race hasn't filled fully, and the ones that are getting in down at the bottom are probably a little bit below your typical bottom weights in the county. Yeah, that's actually an interesting note, isn't it? An interesting footnote. Uh, Barry, your views on the county? Yeah, well, it looks wide open, and, and Tony gave a good few good mentions there. Um, I suppose Pipe Piper at the top, Gordon was considering the champion hurdle, but he switched here when he saw the weight he got. So he's only rated two pound, pound higher than he was last season and Danny Gillen claims three off him he was unlucky in the race last year so now he does have to carry 12 stone less three pound um, but he, that's good for him and Gordon is obviously happy with him to switch him back here so like he would have a shout the other I like is Zenta um, she was third in last year's triumph hurdle she won at entry after that um, she tried chasing uh, in the autumn but struggled there and then she was third in a mare's handicap in Leopardstown last time when I felt she got to the front a little bit soon um, she's a mare who does well in the spring so I thought she could be interesting and Mark Walsh takes her um, over a couple of others
Mm, okay, wide open county then. Barry, let's stick with you for the Albert Bartlett because the horse that you put up to us on Tuesday just in terms of, or I think it was on Monday maybe? God, all the days are getting very confused at this stage. But you flagged up reading Tommy wrong in the Albert Bartlett as a horse that may well shorten from, I think, what was he, what, four or five, maybe four to one at the time. Um, potential to go off shorter in this Albert Bartlett and it is him that's got to the top of the betting ahead of Stablemate Dancing City and Harry Fry's Goodley Park, High Class Hero for the Mullins operation as well. Um, I, I presume you've seen or heard nothing to put you off reading Tommy wrong at this stage. No, I didn't. And Il Atlantique ran a good race um, in the Gallagher's today. So um, no, definitely not. I think he's going to be better up and trip. Um, he has come in in price, as you mentioned. But I think his form is just that there's more depth to his form than High Class Hero, Dancing City. I'm not sure that was the strongest grade one ever ran. Uh, Gidley Park is making a step up from lesser company as well. So no, I think reading Tommy Rang, I'm, I'm, I'm sweet on him. Um, Captain Teague, maybe in each way play. Winner of the Challow Hurdle takes a proper stare to win that. Now, they don't have a good record, um, Challow Hurdle winners in Cheltenham at the festival. Um, but I think he's in the right race in the Albert Bartlett. Um, he won the Persian more early in the season. He is a good horse. Um, he stays well. So he'd be one maybe with, a, with an each way squeak. Yeah, so Tony, it's, it's definitely a wide open grade one and, and that seems to be the sort of theme, some of the grade ones to, on the sort of Thursday and Friday really, a bit more depth about them from a betting point of view. I know you're a reading Tommy Wrong fan, but is he your selection in this race? Uh, definitely he is. Um, I suppose he's, he's from, uh, I would be a bit less enthusiastic about the Ronneville Atlantic in the um, Gallagher's today, I, I thought actually both Dancing City and Reading Tommy wrong, their, their form didn't particularly work out, whereas Gidley Park got a, got a boost of sorts via the lucky place, the horse that made the frame in the Coral Cup, but I'm still happy enough to, to stick with Reading Tommy wrong. I think there's potential with him up and trip, I thought he was a lot better in the form in the race, I know um, he only won narrowly, but the way the race developed, I, thought, I actually thought Atlantic had the run of the race, from the front as often as the way around Nace on the hurdles track there being in the lead turning in is often an advantage or at least been forward I think there's potential with him up and trip I know this race can be one that um, produces shocks and all sorts of big price results but it's not as big a field field this year I think we've only got 15 it's a little bit smaller than would typically be the case I'm just happy to stick with him I'm uh, glad that Paul Town has picked him um, high class hero he just a little bit summer form type with him, um, no, Taurus was fine, it was decent run and all that, but no, reading Tommy wrong for me anyway. Okay, uh, let's move on then to the Gold Cup, that's up next on the Friday, and we've got pretty much the field we were expecting, obviously Gallop and Deschamps up at the top of the betting, Fast or Slow, uh, Jerry Killam, Brave Man's Game, Lohan Press, Gentleman's Game, Corrick Grambler, Monkfish in there, Nasalam as well at this stage, Jungle Boogie and The Real Wacker. Uh, hell of a field, Tony. Terrific to have the best race of the week. Obviously, the big blue ribboned event and to have such strength and depth behind what is a class act at the top of the market. I just I just love the way this race has ended up. The field going to post is excellent. Yeah, it is. It is a pity no Shishkin is not in it now because he, he does add the... the, the the drama factor, I suppose, with what he could do at the start. I know that's a little bit back now. What 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 he would potentially do in the race? He, he's having a clout and one and looking beaten, and then kind of coming again. Um, so that that's 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 a miss from it. Um, I suppose the most interesting thing that I've I've seen here is the fastest slows of the breeding operation. Um, that's kind of public now. He he was wearing the tongue tie there for a while, but the breeding operation is interesting. So. People were saying that there would be potential to improve with him from Leperstown. I thought certainly the way he was ridden at Leperstown didn't seem the best effect, didn't use one of his assets, his jumping. Um, I think there would be kind of improvement to him. Though whether he can just reverse from a gallop in the jumps is, 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 is he just has a task in his hands. I'm quite happy to stick with the horse I've been on about uh, for a while in this um, Korak Ramlock. In terms of winning it, it, it might be a challenge for him, but getting into the frame, maybe not so much. Um, I see his double figures there still without the favourite Shishkin coming out is a help to him in that regard. The way he's going to be ridden is probably going to suit. Uh, Stable had one run well in the Brown Advisory today, and I just think the race is going to get set up for him. He's a lot of proven form at the track. Others are maybe going to shoot the bolt early and try and get Gallop on the Champs speed, whether it be Jerry Colomb, whether it be fast or slow, whether it be brave man's game, the real record like it is, and he could be there to pick up the pieces. I think he can make the frame at a price. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm quite hopeful as well. And as you say, Giovinco today ran an excellent race. What would have he done in the Ultima if they'd ended up there, which was the option for that horse? But yes, um, Corrick Rambler in here, intriguing, as is the likes of a Monk Fisher, a bigger price. Like, what is he going to do in a race like this? God knows at this stage in his career. Um, there's just so many, there's so many intriguing strands, Barry. There is, yeah, and and like Monkfish, you know, you don't know what he's going to pose because he is obviously a very good horse in his day, um, but you can't really um, assess him on his win at Gore and over hurdles. Um, but the race itself, I'm, I'm kind of happy with my own thoughts going through it. Galloping the champ, you know, he is last year's winner. He is the one to beat. Uh, Brave Man's Game, I think, is his danger. Um, he obviously had his three runs, as we mentioned, uh, during the autumn. Paul Nichols has said he, he how that was a mistake. I feel he would have won the King George if he'd gone fresh straight from Weatherby. And if he was a winner of the King George, he'd be a good bit shorter. I would see um, the real whacker and, and Brave Man's game go forward, set a good gallop. Um, gallop of the champ, happy to sit toward with a bit of room, fast or slow inside him. Nazlam could be handy. Um, as regards fast or slow as jumping, I think he's much better going right-handed. He's brilliant at punches down, but I just don't think his jumping is as sharp going left-handed jumps a fraction to his right i think i think that helps him and um, for me i'm really happy to stick with gallop and the champ being the one to beat but i think brave man's game is still great value to be the one to chase him home um so no it, it, it's going to be a great race there's lots of strands as you say lots with chances but i still think they're the two yeah, really looking forward to the Gold Cup itself. Um, one race I can, again, actually I've said this a few times, but I have, I have no idea about the Fox Hunters. I've never even heard of some of these horses in here. Uh, it's on the line is your market leader. I've just about heard of him. After that, it's Fern Lock. Fern's Lock in there even. Uh, Premier Magic, Bill Away, of course, for Patrick Mullins. Sam Crow going in a Fox Hunters. Bless him. Um, I wonder if either of you have a strong view in here. Barry, I'll come to you first here. <laughs> Well, Fern's Lock and it's on the line. There was only a half length or a neck between them in Down Royal at Christmas. Um, Fern's Lock was a good, easy winner in Turles next time. So he's had an easier time. Um, whereas on the line, had a tough race to beat Bill away in February. There's very little between them. Um, JP McManus has bought up. It's on the line in the meantime. Um, he's a horse. He has to have a great chance. I'll be honest, I don't know much about the outsiders. But to me, Fern's Lock has had an easier uh, build up to this race, a much easier build up uh, than it's on the line. Go on, Tony. I just can tell that you've followed this um, this fox hunter form right down to the wire, have you? It's a hard pass for me on this one, I'm afraid. <laughs> I fear I feared that might be the case, but I gave it a go. I don't think it'll be a hard pass for you, though, on the mare's chase, will it? Dino Blue in here taking on uh, Allegor de Vassi with this different... Have they changed up her work rider, I think, is the, the line that's been given out about her more recently. Um, Dino Blue, of course, the class act. Limerick Lake, Gavin Cromwell's runner in here. Bride Hill for Gavin Cromwell as well. Riviera de Tell for Gordon Elliott's bigger price um tony surely this isn't the race that you're passing um i'm mainly passing it i'm, I'm not going to have a strong selection here D dino blue i think we've seen all week that the willie mullen short ones bar silly stuff happening they have been winning she to me has does look like a two mile i think the way she jumps is, is she's fast i know she's at one goat two and a half miles at um fairy house in the easter of our novice hurdle season i'm not sure she's really firing actually at that point so it's hard to ascertain from that um what her stamina limitations are um i do i want to impose her but in a very kind of small way um and i'm going to actually pick up one that's kind of a, a bit of a mad price here and it's a horse that's run well at the, at the, in the race before and has run well at the track and every time she turned up and that's pink legend um she's at four runs over fences here at cheltenham two wins a second and a third second and third were both in this race she won earlier on the season, but her last two runs have been a little bit disappointing. But I think you can give her, not say a massive pass, but the stable weren't in the same form that they were in um, kind of earlier on in the season and where they're at now. So Venetia Williams, kind of, I think she had 19% strike rate all season, but kind of in January and February, she was in a real kind of lull there. She, I think she had only six winners from 84 runners from New Year's Day through to about the 28th, 27th, 28th of February. And that's where those couple of runs came. Um... So I like her kind of course form. I think coming second to Ellie May, coming second to Allegory de Vassi, or toward Allegory de Vassi and Imperius in, Imperius, sorry, in it last season. Also getting a good piece of form. She's getting 66, is 80 to 1. I have a very, very small each way bet on her because I couldn't find anything in the ones chasing up Dino Blue that really jumped out at me.
Yeah, interesting. And Venetia Williams had a quite enough festival, but she didn't have a huge amount of runners. And of course, the form of the yard had been on a bit of a lull, but then obviously last week or so sort of picked up a bit more. So I think some of her horses are being missed a little bit. Um, Barry, your view on the mare's chase? Yeah, I'd agree with Tony as a guy's Dana Blue. She does look like a real two miler, but I think the better the ground, the better for her. It's going to help her just to, you know, it, it, she can use her pace then. Whereas on slower ground, it might just nullify that speed and make her more vulnerable to others. So I think on the the way the ground is shaping up, it looks like yeah, I think it'll be okay for Dana Blue at this stage in her career to step up to two and a half mile. And um, so she is the one to beat. And on that potential better ground, I think um, Gavin Crummel's other runner, Bride Hill could be one with a squeak. Uh, she's won her last three. She's rated 150. She's getting £5 off Diana Blue and she's only £5 wrong at the ratings. So um, I think she could run a big race at a nice price as well. Okay, and then on to the last, the Martin Pipe, obviously a race that we've seen some good winners out of, some exceptional winners out of in the past. So we mustn't ignore the lucky last. On the final day of the festival, um, quite a bore, the Quay de Bourbon is your current favourite for Willie Mullins at three to one with Ballsport. So we record this right now, but there's a whole clutch of runners in behind. Waterford Whispers shown plenty so far um, in his career for Henry de Bromhead. No ordinary Joe in there, a little bit more exposed. Nicky Henderson's runner, uh, will that even show up? Who knows? Answer to Cave. Uh, better days ahead for Gordon Elliott. I mean, in, in behind the favourite here, and it's no surprise to have a Willie Mullins short price favourite martin pipe but in behind plenty of cases to be made barry oh lots of case but and as well pick your rider too because you know you've young riders here on the big stage and um, it's a very tricky and open race tony has made a good case for waterford whispers back earlier on in the season if you like at a good price and definitely has shortened up one with a good chance but i still think uh answer to kf is reasonably well treated i know farm ties in with waterford whispers who beat her at fairy house um but johnny shinnick rides this horse who he knows well himself um has won two of his last four and has been well placed on the other two behind Waterford Whispers and Loch Lynn. so I'm going to stick with Answer to Cave I think one who's on the up and uh, has a good chance Okay um, Tony that leads us on nicely then to ask if you're still with Waterford Whispers at this stage when did you flag him up on the, on the show? Off the back of that latest um, effort or prior to that? After, as, as, as soon as the handicap entries came out, I think um, was when it was on about him. Yes, he's well, he's well shortened up. But uh, things have, things have hopped right from with Sam Jess going for the Coral Cup, and it was if he was going to get in there. And you look, it's coming out initially, but he's got in very, very comfortably. Yeah, he he does hold a, probably a, fa- a fair chance already right at this stage. Um, the other one I mentioned there, I think on the on the show for Tuesday, Yet Star, I, I'd still be keen on him. I, I think there's plenty of juice in his price still. A little bit disappointed Danny Gilligan isn't taking the ride. Shane Fitzgerald. Um, is riding him Danny Gilligan I suppose on the stable first thing and better days ahead but I just think Yates Star is kind of similarly on the up if maybe just not as unexposed as Waterford Whispers but it shipped really well in the valuable three mile handicap uh, hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival and so they, they'd be two and, and they'd be two strong opinions now of, on those two but there's also one um, there at, at kind of 50 to 1 and, and we're definitely going to have something on this as well for a yard that the horse ran really well in this last year Um but he won was the horse last year, sequestered is the horse this year. Um, he has some nice form last summer, kind of where he finished second to height last year, and then he beat a horse called Stutzakini, who won a handicap afterwards, be, be a wide, wide margin. Um, he had a kind of midwinter break, came back, I presume needed his first run back at Taurus, and then ran that same race as he had started the Dublin Racing Festival, but he just got dropped out way too far out, and he just never really got into it. Um, made a bit of a move um, about... Uh, half mile, three furlongs out, and eventually kind of flattened out. I thought the three miles stretched him, so maybe back to two and a half. Um, he, he's not he's not a forlorn 50 to one shot. I, th- I think he deserves to be a little bit shorter than that. So yeah, Martin Pipe's probably got, he's going to be one of the stronger opinion races of the week for me, which actually it has it has been in recent years, and, and uh, which hopefully we'll be able to get the winner of it uh, among the three of those. Yeah, finishing with a real flurry there, Tony. I like it. Stamina's the name of your game. Um, 
Look, that wraps up day four. God, at that point, we'll all be ready to head home, won't we? Uh, but look, boys, thank you so much, Barrigoti, Tony Keenan, for your help with the daily shows, for your contributions. As always, listeners, viewers out there, thank you for staying with us. Hopefully the week has been lucky for you. Hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as we have at this stage. But I should again timestamp this Wednesday evening. We are recording this, so just bear that in mind. But for now, thank you very much for watching. That was Off The Fence.